It's like general capital assets. What is this? General long-term liabilities. So are general long-term liabilities the same as long-term liabilities of the enterprise fund or the fiduciary <laughs> funds? No. The word general gives it away. It's associated with the government. <coughs> so this is what we'll take a look at, just basically what they are, what the journal entries are, what the disclosure is, just like we did with the other. We'll talk about debt margin, overlapping debt. Debt margin basically tells you how much they can borrow. Debt limit is what the maximum they can borrow. The different types and purposes of debt service funds. And uh, there are a lot of journal entries. We'll skip, skim through some of them quickly. But let's first talk about what are general long-term liabilities. Interestingly, the way that is defined, it's not a liability of the proprietary or fiduciary fund. What are examples of proprietary fund? Enterprise fund, internal service fund, right? Okay. If debt is reported in the proprietary or fiduciary fund with the full faith and credit backing the contingent liability should be disclosed in the notes. Uh, let's take that example before someone asked about the MTA. If MTA issues debt and the debt has in the bond covenant it says if MTA is unable to pay, City of New York will pay. That's a contingent liability and has to be disclosed and that's what it means here. And why do entities do that to be able to sell bonds? Maybe there might be Folks who might not want to purchase bonds if they're backed only by, uh, by a proprietary fund and not with the full faith and credit. Here, as you see, it's full faith and credit. Well, can you do it again? Well, if it is done with, um, if it has debt which is repaid from the fares, but the debt is general obligation with full faith and credit of the city of New York, then they have to disclose it in their financial statements, even though the debt will be shown in MTA's books. But they have to show that as contingent liability. Do you see what I mean? These are the types of general long-term liabilities. So lo and behold, we thought long-term liabilities were only debt. But look at some of the other examples. Bonds, warrants, notes, capital leases, unfunded, unfunded compensated absences, vacation and sick leave, unfunded pension obligations. Remember when I showed you the balance sheet, the statement of net position for the state of New Jersey? This was a huge number, billions and billions of dollars. Long-term portion of judgments and claims. So anytime you read in the Star Ledger about a trooper getting sued and the state having to pay, well, that is a judgment and claim against the state. Pollution remediation obligations themselves. So uh, we'll talk about this shortly. These items, compensated absence and pension obligations, especially pension obligations, are very big in governments. And as I said to you, this is what's going to sink a few cities and few states. Because what happens is, and not to go too much into this, but you know, there are two types of pension plans. There's the one which everybody wants, which is a defined benefit plan. You get paid a certain amount of your salary when you retire, regardless how your investments do. The state would manage them. And then there is a defined contribution plan. And in one case, basically, you get benefits which are defined. And defined contribution is whatever you put in to your fund. And when you're 65 or 67, whatever is left, you can draw that down. So who carries the investment risk? You. So that's why people like defined benefit plans, because it doesn't matter what the market does. You will get 
what's promised to you. But that promise is based on your putting some money and your employer putting some money. Well, in the for-profit arena, in the business entities, it's very straightforward. You put five or 10% and the employer matches it with five or 10%. With state government, you put in five or 10% and the employer, in this case, the state government is supposed to do this. Well, in many cases, this hasn't happened. The employee has made the contribution, not the state. And what has happened is continued unfunding of this, underfunding of this has led to some serious, serious problems. So GASB requires that if you have unfunded pension, you disclose the unfunded portion of that liability. And we'll talk more about this in Chapter 8. Actually, we'll spend quite a bit of time on this. <coughs> but lots of real serious problems, you know. Um, and the pension funds are interesting because uh, they're based on this asset liability model where you put a certain amount in and hopefully at the end you'll have enough money to retire based on your age expectancy. But if your ra rate of return on the market was five or six percent, let's just assume, and you assume as your rate of return 10 percent, is that a good idea? No because you're never going to meet that rate of return. And that's what the states have done. Many, many states have overestimated the return they'll get. Why? So they wouldn't have to put extra money into the fund. But now cities like Detroit and others, Illinois, these guys have, I, I don't know how they'll pull out of the problems that they have. You know, it's true that they have that fund and they've been using the corporate pension fund. Yeah. And you and I both know that yeah. that's completely no profit. It just takes over. No. Well, with the hedge funds, you know, you have to, and th it really has to do with, and there's a, there's could be a half a course taught on just pension fund investing because it's not like other types of investing, as you said, you know, hedge funds managers, these guys haven't done well in the past five years. Their performance has been really awful, and uh, you could do better by investing in Vanguard's, uh, what's that fund, the. Uh, one with invest in 500 different stocks. You know, the, the biggest one, you'll do better investing in those than investing with a hedge fund manager, which is hard to believe. But uh, so these are the types of general long-term liabilities that a government has. Uh, one area that I want to just talk about, which is kind of uh, very different from anything else you'll see, is this thing called 